me, uh, and some of you don't know me. My name is Scott Seward. I serve as the lay leader here at Duck Church. Um, Pastor Chris is uh, not feeling well. He uh, actually uh, broke a rib, so uh, he's home resting, and uh, our prayers are with him, and hope he, uh, he doesn't feel as much pain. So uh, uh, he asked me to, to fill in for him, and um, also Chap Moore will be doing the sermon this morning. Um, well, please stand as we begin our, with our call to worship. The Lord offered himself once and for all so that our conscience can be free from all things that lead to death. Let us pray to God and worship the living God. Please remain standing as we sing number 111, How Can We Name a Love? Join me with our prayer of confession found in your bulletin. O oh God, you have been faithful, yet we have not loved you with our whole hearts. You showed us how to love our fellow human beings, yet we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Turn us back to you, O oh God, that we may follow your commandments. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maybe. <clears throat> now we begin with the declaration of forgiveness. Beloved, the Lord is loving, merciful, and just. Therefore, we are reconciled to God and to one another, that we might walk in peace and in love. 
Um, I was asked to do the pastoral prayer this morning. Uh, I don't know if many of you have heard, but it seems that uh, COVID is, is rampanting once again on the Outer Banks. Uh, here at the church, Debbie Lucas uh, has COVID. And uh, so we pray for her and her family and um, those that she's been around, especially here at the church, in the office. Uh, Pastor Chris himself, uh, not only is he dealing with Bell's palsy, but uh, come to find out earlier this week, he sneezed and broke his rib. So uh, I've heard of that before, but I've never known anybody who's actually done it. So he's at home uh, resting, and you can... I'm sure you can imagine how painful that is with a broken rib. Um, continue prayer prayers for uh, Pastor Amy and her family, uh, for Lynn Blackburn, of course, Pastor Chris. Are there any other prayers that we can uh, that you would like to lift up today? John? Wayne Boxer. Kessler and who else? Father, we thank you, and we, you've heard the names lifted up before you today uh, in our voices and those in our hearts. Please be with us, be with them. Reassure them that you are always with them. Give them your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, at this time, we're to do the mission moment. From my understanding, it is uh, about the crisis hotline. You can see the screens. Hello, I'm Bronwyn Thornton, Executive Director of the Outer Banks Hotline. Hotline started in 1980, it just as a crisis line uh, that was manned by volunteers. And over the years, we've grown. We operate a nine-bedroom safe house. We are one of a handful of shelters and communities of our size in the state of North Carolina that's set up to take men. Uh, we operate five thrift stores. The income from that helps fund a lot of the outreach that we do. We're not just a, a domestic violence shelter. I have advocates that help fill out domestic violence protection orders, restraining orders. Anybody that comes to us for help along those regards, um, we're able to sit down with them, help them with the paperwork, actually go to court with them, help them navigate the legal process. So even if it's just to hold their hand while they're in court, so that we get the best outcome possible. Um, I also, my advocates also go into the schools. Uh, we work on anti-bullying. We just did a huge big campaign with teen dating violence or anti-teen dating violence. Um, I have a full-time human trafficking advocate that's dedicated to working on that. She um, covers five counties. We're getting ready to start a safe bar outreach where we go into bars and we encourage bartenders how to recognize uh, individuals that might be impaired and maybe making wrong decisions with who they leave leave with. 
Um, we put up flyers and bars in all the restrooms that you can tear off and that you can call us if you're in a bad situation. Hotline uses volunteers in all kinds of different ways. Um, our thrift stores always are looking for volunteers to help there. But we have volunteers that we train that man our crisis, crisis line that take four hour, six hour overnight shifts um, handling crisis line phone calls. So as far as volunteers, if you ha whatever your talent or passion is, we'll find a way to put you to use. Whether it's helping us fix some things in the thrift store, whether it's coming in if you're an artist and painting maybe with some clients in the safe house, or when we start having support groups again, maybe babysitting while the adults are in the support groups. But if you have a passion and you have a sk or a skill, we've got a place to put you. Um, I want to point out at this moment that uh, in your bulletins, there's a, a mission opportunities in your bulletin. And uh, many of those with Silver Links and uh, Duck Methodist Men, as well as uh, we have a meeting next Saturday at 8 here at the church. Uh, there's the Wednesday Fellowship in June. Uh, I was asked to bring this up because as, as a Methodist Men, we have a fundraiser this Thursday. And uh, that's to go to the Ukrainian relief. And uh, I was told that there'll be some tickets for sale right out after the service in the uh, in the hallway here. So uh, I was at, I, my Methodist men friend said, uh, can you please mention that this morning? So I did. Okay. Um, also, uh, because of uh, Pastor Chris not being here, there is a new membership meeting that was supposed to take place this afternoon. And of course, that's going to have to be postponed because of, uh, of his... Uh, illness or his, his broken ribs, so that won't take place. Um, there's something else, but I don't remember what it is. Oh, Jane Parr, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Jane is filling in uh, for Deb, so uh, thank you for coming in and helping us out here. Today. And meeting with the choir just before the service that uh, they were all praising her. Um, Please stand at this moment as we sing number 273, Jesus' Hands Were Kind Hands. always the toughest part redirecting everybody is uh, you remain standing and, and we reset the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived. 
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. to this sermon two times? You can leave if you want. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you, Daniel, for the chiming of the hour. Thank you. Thank you, Jane, for, for stepping up and helping our, our church. We really appreciate that. And thanks to the McGriffs who are ushering for us today. Thank you. My name is Chaplain Gary Moore. I go to the 8 o'clock service. Um, we live in Kerala, so in the summers, there's no way we could make this service. Uh, and that's why, you know, we said, okay, we'll just go to the 8th. But uh, my wife and I sit way back there in the corner, and uh, she was there today. Actually, she came to hear me preach, Clark. <laughs> and, and I usually forget to take up the offering, Jennifer, and she'll wave a dollar bill. So I have nobody to do that today. So, Ellen, would you wave a dollar bill if I forget the offering? I'm going to need you. Helen, you do, you know, I'm going to need your help. Okay. Oh, boy. Thank you, Lord. That's not hard to hear. Today, um, our scripture is going to be taken from Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And, um, you know, they say, oh, you can just warm up a, an old sermon and, you know, just preach it again. No. I had to rework this whole thing. And, and, and my wife had to ask me, I don't know, Chip, a couple times she says, you know, you've got good ideas, but what are you trying to say? You know, she always dumps me like that. So I want to read to you a passage, and this is not a cheerleader sermon. This is a sermon to energize you, to encourage you, because we've got enough going on, not only in our country, in our world, but even in our church. It seems like Satan's just pounding our church with everybody who's sick and struggling. But usually with that pounding right afterward, Christy, there's blessing. I think God wants to bless us. And that's why we're getting pounded right now. And we have to move on in the strength and joy of the Lord. And so that was the first sermon. I'll get you out here by three. <laughs> Hear the word of God as it is recorded in Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, there's four verses, 18 through 20. Verses 18 through 20. Uh, Solomon is supposed to have written this, but it, we don't know for sure. Hear the word of the living God. Then I realized that it's good and proper for a man to eat and drink and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun. During the day, the, the few days of life God has given him, for this is his lot. Moreover, 
When God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot, and to be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart. Gladness of heart. Well, she's back. Yep, she's back. Tell me, what do you think? What do you think of when I say the name Imelda Marcos? Shoes. Think of shoes. When her husband was de uh, deposed as leader of the Philippines, those people, the people who cleared, cleared uh, the quarters, found 2,700 pairs of shoes. 2,700 pairs. And, and Tom, I don't know how many she took with her. She must, I don't know. But yeah, just one, uh-huh. <laughs> that would have been a, a real life change. But w what would it take for Imelda to enjoy life? What would it take? And it's, it's kind of what we're dealing with here. What does it take for us to enjoy life, to be okay that we've got money to make it and, uh, and a home and, and probably more than the rest of the world? It's okay to have it. With the gift of God, Christians enjoy their wealth and possessions, their lot in life and their work. The capacity to enjoy is a gift of God. Christians can enjoy what is handed to us day by day because our lives have been turned around, changed, turned around by the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus has touched our lives and we can enjoy life. So what is this passage trying to bring out? Well, first of all, it's about waking up. It's about waking up. It's the first little phrase, then I realized. Where is he coming from? Why does he even say that? Well, the verses before, about 10 verses before onward, talk about the meaninglessness of money and possessions because they never satisfy. They never satisfy. Then he swirls into to the, a, a grievance evil. There's a grievance evil. The hoarding of wealth is a grievous evil because we all die and we'll take nothing with us. We don't take anything with us. And so he gets to a point where, you know, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of grinding. And then it says... Then I realized, and we have the good words I just read. But what is like this? In the, in the New Testament, we have when Peter came to his senses. On Wednesday morning, 0600, we've got a men's Bible study at Stackham High. We read Acts chapter 12 and 13. That's what we do, just read, read a chapter and... and um, you know, and then proceed to share all of our ignorance, and we have a good time. It's a good time, and you get a free breakfast. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I like that. But we read a passage in chapter 12 about when Peter was released from prison by the angel, and apparently he didn't, he really thought he was dreaming. It was on his way, actually on his way to the house of Mary, the mother <laughs> the mother of John Mark. The, her, the house church met at Mary's home. And Peter on the way came to his senses. Came to his senses. And it's kind of like he woke up. Yeah, this is reality. I'm out of prison. I'm standing at the door of, of, the, of the church. And that's, that's what kind of you know, happens with the writer here. He, then he realized. 
Christians wake up are in our given eyes to see. It's a gift. We're given eyes to see our many blessings, great and small, by giving God our praise. You know, the word hallelujah, you know, I, I tell you, it's not an English, it's not an American word. It's a Hebrew word. Alleluia. Alel means praise and Yah means Lord. It's a Hebrew word. Alleluia. Giving praise to God. Alleluia. And it's from the Hebrew Bible. But we go further into the New Testament and we find out the sacrifice of praise. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Have you ever heard of the New Testament sacrifice of praise? It's right here. This is the verse. Let me read it for you. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of the lips that confess his name. Two things. Sacrifice because sometimes it hurts to praise. It hurts to say thank you Lord it hurts to say thank you Lord for allowing me to hurt this bad because I know you love me it hurts to say thank you Lord for allowing such pain to my son or daughter or to my parents or to my friends Thank you, Lord. You know how precious that is in God's sight? If you say that out loud, and that's what the verse says, you've got to say it out loud. You just can't think it. Saying, praise you, Lord. Thank you for this struggle in my life. Thank you for how my daughter and son are struggling so much. That's a precious prayer in God's sight. And that's why it's called the sacrifice of the New Testament is to praise the Lord out out loud. The second thing about this is I just said it. It's the fruit of the lips that confess his name. And this means we say praise the Lord out loud. Thank you, Lord. And you know what? You can even say this with your eyes open driving your car. You can say praise the Lord. You don't have to close your eyes to say it. Christians are given eyes to see their blessings by praising God out loud and by asking the Holy Spirit to guide us to see our blessings. You see, because we're believers in New Testament times, it's all about the Holy Spirit. You know, the Acts of the Apostles should have been Renamed Acts of the Holy Spirit. Come on. There are promises and there are gifts in, in the Bible. This Bible has so many promises and gifts. Don't be afraid to read it, to open it, and, you, and I give you permission. You can even play, Jim, you can even play Bible sweepstakes. You can have your Bible like this, open it up, and point and read. Just Get into the scriptures. There's promises. There there are gifts here. There's strength and there's joy and there's comfort and there's exhortation. I want to talk about the gifts from God. First from our scripture. Here are verses 19 and 20 again. First, let's talk about this gift. Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, you know, it's okay to have it, okay? You you find out right here. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. To accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart. Okay, 
enjoying life and living with our wealth and possessions, being content with our lot in life, and finding satisfaction in our work happens as we keep thanking the Lord and praising the Lord. One way out of depression, just it's a significant way, is to start praising the Lord. People will think you're nuts, but you can do it. You can start praising the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's really bad. This manure sandwich, oh my gosh, I can't take any more. But Lord, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And just watch how your countenance, your heart, your soul will begin to breathe when you praise the Lord, when you thank the Lord. Your soul will begin to breathe. And if you got to go out before you start doing it and spit on the ground, that's okay from an army chaplain. That's okay. That's plenty okay. But just start praising the Lord and watch the action of the Holy Spirit on your heart. Because this is a gift. So how about the gifts in the New Testament? I want to talk about five. I'll get you out 230. Five gifts, and we're going to go and... Okay. First is found in Ephesians chapter 2. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Have you ever sensed a conscious need for Messiah Jesus? He bled and died to take away my sin. I love that phrase from how great thou art. Love it. He bled and died to take away my sin. When was the last time you sensed a conscious need of Jesus? Not only for yourself, but for a friend or for a loved one. Take it to the Lord and start with a praise. And thank you, Lord. And let the Holy Spirit generate you. Salvation. Second one is from Romans chapter 6. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Just one little question here. Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Eternal life, salvation, or gifts from God. Acts chapter 2, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm going too quick now. I probably have to, I want to slow up. You will see, are you listening to the Holy Spirit? That still small voice, that, that's for you. It's for you. It's not for just the clergy. It's for every Christian believer. The Holy Spirit can, can motivate you to touch your life. Are you listening to the still small voice of the Spirit? Another question. Okay, number four. Fasten your seatbelts. Romans chapter 12. We have different gifts according to the grace God has given us. And these gifts are as good if you're 91 years old or if you're 11 years old. You never retire from the gifts. Everybody has a purpose in the church. Everybody can use their gift, and everybody has at least one. Every believer has at least one gift. Do you know your spiritual gift? You have at least one. You might have more. And to use these gifts, the purpose is to build up the other Christian believers, to build them up to strengthen them. And this this can be found 
find your spiritual gift, well, let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans chapter 12. There, there's, you know, these aren't all of them, but listen to some of the spiritual gifts. And as you listen, well, if you can't really think about what spiritual gifts I have, you know, look around. And you probably have some fellow some believers right here that you know their spiritual gifts. You know theirs. And if you would ask somebody, what do you think my spiritual gift is? You might be surprised what people see in your life. You might be really, really encouraged. So what are the, some of the spiritual gifts? The gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of discernment. And, and the verse in 1 Corinthians 12, 14 ends with this. And you can't deny it. You can't cross it out. You can't cover it up. It says, the Spirit gives to each one just as he determines. So these, this is not a corporate gift. This is your gift. You and me. We have spiritual gifts it's a done deal. You believe in Jesus Christ, you've got a spiritual gift, and your job is to use it in the church, to build up the church. Okay, in Romans we find there's a gift of serving, the gift of teaching, the gift of encouraging, the gift of giving generously, the gift of leadership, and I like this last one that I'm gonna mention, the gift of showing mercy. There are more. There are more. So God has given us gifts. He's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, eternal life, salvation. And in James, the last one, okay? This is the last one. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Every good and perfect gift. And I'll ask you this question. Are you enjoying what you have? Your lot in life? What you're doing every day? Christians are the light of the world. We're the salt of the world to make others thirsty to love Jesus. My identity is I'm a sinner saved by grace. But my job is to be salt of the earth. And by, by my reactions and my dispositions, and I, you know, I'm batting about 300, okay? <laughs> I'm batting about 300 with this. It, it is, to, is, is to let God use me for his kingdom. Christians are the light of the world, salt of the earth, salt of the world, and others are watching us. Christians enjoy what we receive every day because God's gifts to us are not for ourselves. Okay, this is a big, you know, I'm, I'm coming to the side. I'm coming around to the side of you. I want to walk side by side with you because these gifts are not for me and my purposes and for my reasons. These gifts are for God to help himself to us. These gifts are for God to help himself to me, for his purposes, for his kingdom. And these gifts complete us as Christians. Christians are completed by God's gifts. Okay, one more hour. You can hang in there with me. One more hour. Here we go. It's through these gifts and the actions of the Holy Spirit that we may experience gladness of heart. Christians are given eyes to see their blessings by praising God out loud, out loud, and by asking the Holy Spirit to guide us to see our blessings. The actions of the Holy Spirit. And I'd like to, to close... And I'd like to, to read you our scripture paraphrase, okay? It's my, my paraphrase, okay? 
This is from Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Then I realized that it is good to eat and drink, to find satisfaction in my work during this life that God gives me. When I enjoy the wealth and possession God's give, God gives me, accepting my lot in life, I'm happy in my work because all of this is a gift of God. I seldom think about the days gone by because God gives joy to my heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. See, I woke you up at the end. Okay. Oh, Helen, thank you for waving the dollar bill. Thank you. Oh, yeah, and Helen and Tom, yeah, we're going to take up the offering. Yeah. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Boy, am I glad you did that. Okay, will the ushers please come forward?
gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the life that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for obeying your purpose through the cross as you bled and died to take away our <coughs> sin. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless each one here as we enter into this, this day and this week. We praise you this day. In the name of the Father and of the Son.